Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you guys how I have been preparing our portfolios for our end of year assessments. So if you're new to homeschooling or you have young kiddos, especially if you have young kiddos, or you're just planning on using the portfolio approach for your assessments, I just wanted to share with you how I have been slowly and continually adding to our portfolios to kind of avoid that last minute rush of trying to pull everything together, whether it is the night before our assessments or the week of our assessments. A lot of times that can be stressful. I have done it both ways where I have <laughs> tried to pull everything together the night before. And I've also most recently in the last couple of years done this more continual approach where I am um, slowly adding things into our portfolio throughout the year to avoid that mad rush. Now, having done it both ways, I highly suggest doing a little bit at a time. It makes it a lot easier and it's kind of like a grab and go um, approach where when I finally schedule our assessments, I can just grab what we've accomplished so far and I'm ready to go. I don't have to take a lot of last minute fine tuning and adding things to our portfolio to get ready for the actual assessment. Now, obviously this wouldn't apply to anyone whose state requires testing or you're not able to use a portfolio approach, but I still wanted to share a lot of times people want to go ahead and keep a really good document of what their child has learned throughout the year. And I go ahead and I keep these portfolios for my kids in case, you know, something were ever come back on me and try and ask, you know, what have you done throughout the year? I have proof that we have been home educating, we have been doing things. So what I basically wanna do is just walk you through our binders and show you what I've included in them so far. If you've watched the planning videos with me, you know how I have a general setup of the different things that I plan to include, but I just wanna give you a quick glimpse so it might you know, give you some ideas as to the things that you could be including in your own portfolio and you can get those ready for your kiddos. So I'll go ahead, again, every kid has their own binder. So I'm gonna start with Ezra. So again, at the very opening here, I have our, our plan. Basically, everything that we want to accomplish in every day. It's just broken up through Monday through Friday. And if anyone wanted to see what I covered on any of the days, you would be able to look right here. And this is our schedule, essentially. It's everything that we've covered in all of our different subjects. And as I complete one, so you can see the next one's blank, because as I mentioned before, I only plan one week at a time. So, um, once we finish this current week, I'll take it and I'll flip it to the back so that when our school year is done, the very top sheet is going to be our first week of school and it's just going to go in order as our school year did. So right here is, is the very first thing. I have record of all the lessons, all the books, everything that we did, play dates, park days, field trips, anything is going to be documented on, the, on our schedule right here. Once we get past that, then I have these really nice plastic dividers. I really like these. I feel like they hold up really well. And I have two of them in here for math and language arts. And they, I like them too because they have little folders in here where I can add a couple of extra things. And the very first thing that I have in here are one, I just have a couple of sheets of paper where I just document a few things. The first one are our field trips. Now, I do document from, since the school year runs from July 1 to June 30, anything that we do, even if it's over the summer, I include it. So you can see that all of our vacations, because a lot of things we do are educational, I include it on here. I include trips to the library, I include trips to science centers, as well as parks and anything that we're doing. So that's the first one, our, our field trips. The next one I have are the list of read aloud books that we've done as a family. So the things that we've been reading, I have a list of all the books that we've read. And then poor Ezra, he's still learning to read. He doesn't have a list of the books that he's completed, although he is super close to finishing his very first book. So once he finishes that, I will go ahead and add that to our list. So he'll have a list of all the books that he's read as well on his own. Now that was in the front of that. 
in the second and um, that same little folder right here, I have some blob maps. I mentioned that for geography, we are doing American geography and we just have a little um, blob map, a little trick to try and get a general idea of the United States. So I put his blob maps in there as well. So after that, it leads me to our math. And in the math, it has a record of all of his test grades here. So I can grade, uh, put his grade as well as the date at which he did it. And um, after that is where I just throw in about one to two worksheets a week, showing progress, showing that we're continually doing math. And that way too, I can see the progress that he's made from lesson two until the end when we, you know, when we're at the very end, currently we have up to lesson 25 in here. So he's got all of his different tests, when he has a test, I do go ahead and throw it in here. If we don't happen to have a test that week, I throw another worksheet in there, just showing that we did do math, we covered something for math that week. So I just have like an example, an array of work in here. If you don't wanna put in something once a week, you might do once every two weeks. You know, it's totally up to you how you wanna do it. That's just what we do for us. We do something about once a week, I throw something in there. So after our math, then we move on to our language arts, and this is the same idea. I'm throwing in just a little glimpse of his work from that week. So whether it's some writing or a phonics test where he was testing on his, you know, the letters and the sounds and some spelling, some reading, um, just how he's doing with his writing. Again, it's showing progress throughout the year as he's going, that he gets better with his writing and that we're, you know, slow, slowly developing our skills. So again, I just have a couple of things in there, maybe one or two worksheets a week, just again, showing his work throughout the year that, you know, I didn't just plop them in front of the TV and just let him watch TV all week. We did do some work. <laughs> so after that, you know, we have just some fun things in the back. Um, every year we take a picture with the kids on their first day of school, just documenting some of their favorites, some of the things that they want to be when they grow up. So that's in there. We also have our, um, I put in there our proof of um, our, well, one, our letter of intent when we send it to our school district, um, just notifying them that we plan to homeschool, as well as the letter that is our excusal letter from our school district, um, just making sure that they have it. So again, if that were ever to be questioned, I have proof in there in that um, that we have been excused by our, you know, our school district and we have notified them and done what we needed to do. Um, in the back, then, I've also included just some of the stuff that we did on our field trips and our trips. So I've got a map of Gettysburg and our Junior Ranger notebooks and um, things from Fort Laramie and fluorescent fossil beds, the Gateway Arch and um, the Flight 93 Memorial. So anything that we can show that we were doing some stuff while we were on vacation, I go ahead and throw that in there as well. And that is just a little glimpse of what I have in there. Now again, I'm slowly adding to it as the year goes. That way at the end of the year, I'm not like, oh, I've gotta have you know all these worksheets and all these things to show we did math and we did language and all these different subjects. I've just slowly put it in week by week. And then, like I said, it's a grab and go. When I know that I'm ready for my assessment or we schedule it, I just kind of get the binder and get a few other things that I want to have as proof for covering other subjects and I'm ready to go. Now you might need more dividers in your binder. You might have something in there where you're gonna cover science or history or social studies or spelling or whatever. For those subjects, personally, for our family, we don't have any worksheets to, you know, put in a three ring binder. Instead, for those subjects, we have notebooks. And so when I go and grab this binder and we get ready for our assessments, I'm going to grab those other notebooks that are already ready for our assessments. So let me just show you as I go to grab. I'll probably also grab their Bible journal. So they have a journal where we keep track of the things that we're covering when we're doing our Bible in the morning. I'll grab that. We have our science and history um, 
notebook. And again, so this is why I wouldn't have a, a history and science part in my notebook or my binder because we have a notebook and I could easily just grab this to show that we were covering science and history. If I wanted something to show that we were covering art, I would grab their art journal. So I could just easily throw this on top. If I wanted something to show that we were covering spelling, I would grab his spelling notebook. If I needed some more things, again, it's totally, you know, it's kind of up to you and what you feel like you need to show for your assessments and what your assessor is asking for. Um, I could easily grab my Fix-It Grammar notebook and the workbook that we have to show we were doing some grammar, as well as the math book or the math notebook. Um, and this is just where um, Gabriel and Isaiah each have one where they're doing, since their math textbook is, is more like a textbook, it doesn't have worksheets, they do all of their math work in a notebook. And so again, I could easily grab that. And so basically, since all of these notebooks are continually being added to, the night before I'm going to my assessment, I would grab this and be like, okay, this is what I need for Gabriel to prove that we have been doing and covering all these subjects that are required in our state. And I've continually added to it throughout the year. You know, we're continually doing our math lesson. All of those things are ready and it's not a mad rush to gather everything up the night before our assessments. And sometimes at the end of the year, if necessary, I will add a little write-up at the end, maybe covering um, what different curriculum we used or just different things, whether it was sports or how we covered um, fire safety and health and different things like that that are more um, through experience and discussion and cooking and playing and being outside if those are kind of requirements for your state. Um, I'll just include a brief little write-up and then, you know, slide it down into one of the pockets in his um, binder, just sharing how we covered those subjects as well. Now, your binder, your notebooks, you know, they're probably not gonna look like mine. And in fact, they probably shouldn't because your binders are going to be a reflection of your child and their learning journey and the things that they learn throughout the year and how they progress throughout the year. So you might have a binder that looks totally different than mine and that's okay. It really should reflect you and your child and their, their journey throughout the year. So if you have different subjects in yours, that's cool. If you did lots of projects and you're putting in your projects, that's great. It really is just going to um, reflect you and your educational path because we all use different methods. We all use different curriculum. So it's totally okay if yours doesn't look like mine. It really shouldn't be cookie cutter. All right, guys, that's really all that I have. It's, it's super simple. Like I just, all of my kids have very simple, similar binders. So even though this one is Gabriel's and he is in fifth grade versus first grade for my son, my youngest son, Ezra, they still have the same general idea. We still have our schedule. We still have the lists of um, field trips and read alouds and the book lists that he's accomplished. We still have our blob maps. I still have our math in here where I have documented his tests and all of his math fact worksheets that he's accomplished throughout the year. I still have his language arts where we have in here some of his IEW writing papers and keyword outlines and things of how we've, you know, written our papers. Still have his um, first day of school paper, our letter of intent and our excusal letter and Again, still the same things from all of the trips that we took, just documenting some of the learning that we did that might have looked a little different. And obviously all those same notebooks that I just showed you briefly, um, will be. I'll have them for each kid as well. So again, you can kind of make this look how you want it to look, how it reflects your child. So I hope that was helpful. I hope this idea of slowly generating a portfolio um, gives you some ideas of how you can slowly make one, either catch up if you haven't done anything, or two, just you know slowly start pulling things and creating a binder to just kind of prevent having that last minute stress of trying to pull everything together for your assessment. If you guys have any questions, as always, I would love to answer them for you. And I will see you guys next time. Have a blessed day.